top of the spectrum news. One-sided conversation is typical of someone with Asperger's. Although highly verbal, their restricted interests precipitate over-focusing on one particular subject to the point of being a little professor. They tend to talk to people or lecture them rather than talk with them in a reciprocal social manner. Dr. Atwood reminds us that reciprocal conversation is not instinctive to those on the spectrum. Medically speaking, they truly don't understand. That often the person with Asperger's syndrome is confused and unsure of what to do. And when they make a mistake, people say, well, I shouldn't have to tell you this, you should know. And the fact is they don't know. Most studies on autism have been done with visual stimuli with facial processing. And they've looked at kind of activation differences. And there are a number of differences that show up in regions that we know process facial input. As a result of the differences revealed in the MRI imaging, Dr. Plache gives us an example of how very difficult it is for Aspies to read facial expressions and to process the meaning of conversations we engage in every day. I didn't say that he stole my wallet. And if you put the accent or the emphasis on a diff different word, it totally means something different. Like, I didn't say that he stole my wallet. 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 When you think about those six different sentences, they're totally different. But a person with Asperger might say the same sentence and not realize that if he just emphasizes one word or the other, it gives the other person a totally different meaning. Oh, hey, how did you do on the math test? I did pretty well. How about you? Um, okay. I don't believe I've met you before. What's your name? Isaac. I'm Julie. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. I can really tell I feel very different from other people. Like, um, let's see an example. Well, sometimes I guess I feel like I have the mind of a child, in a way. And, of course, I don't like to look people in the eyes. Not looking people in the eye is a great difficulty for those with high-functioning autism and Asperger's syndrome. But there are methods in which to cheat that uncomfortable social expectation. So what I do is I look at the bridge of their nose, and that fools them. It's an optical illusion that makes it look like I'm making eye contact. And it's kind of hard, and it takes a long time to get good at it. But just practice. You know, if you're bored at school, practice looking here on the teacher. So as you look at um, what it must feel like, um, we really are, are starting to understand much more that there's a true, it's not just, I don't want to listen to you, or I don't want to engage, or I don't want to give you eye contact. It's a true breakdown in perceiving um, people's body language, even perceiving tone of voice, facial expressions. Those things don't register in the same way that they do for their neurotypical brain. To give you an insight to how it feels to be thrown into a social scenario for those on the high end of the spectrum, we've consulted with autistic kids and adults, then recreated an everyday scene at school. Did you get that assignment in history class? Hello, we're kind of talking to you. Picture yourself walking down the hall between classes. Are you running the bus today? A potential social and sensory overload. You look nice today. Most people, as infants, learn to mirror the emotions of people around them, and they pick them up very quickly. Did you get the history assignments today? For people with Asperger's, the part of the brain that deals with all of this simply doesn't function. The inability to read facial expressions is why they have trouble empathizing with others. It isn't a matter of a lack of empathy. Rather, it's the inability to notice emotions in others. 